Okay, our first vocabulary word is history. History. Now, some people like to make a joke, or maybe it's you know it's a kind of an observation, I guess. His story. <laughs> So it's an interesting way to look at it. Of course, it's only talking about men then history. But if you think about it, most history was made by men, written by men, and they focused on men. But of course, there are many famous women also in history. But of course, history doesn't come from that. I'm just making it. It's like a, kind of like a joke or an observation.、Uh, but it doesn't. It doesn't come from that. Okay, it's just kind of an interesting thing to remember. But history is a story of what happened、uh, a long time ago, or, or you know, not even a long time ago, but what happened in the past in particular places. The definition here is the things that happened in a particular place. But of course, we could also talk about you know, you can talk about American history, European history, Asian history, Korean history. You know a particular place, but you could also just talk about history in general, which is world history. You know what happened on the Earth, right? So、uh, you know a particular place on the Earth as well too. But that's history, and usually when we talk about history, we're talking about written history. So history only goes back、uh, to a time when people started writing things down, right? So written history. Uh, sometimes you'll see people talk about、uh, written history because when a long time ago, thousands of years ago, when people invented writing, then we could re- then we could remember things that happened a long time ago. How did people know what happened before reading? Well, they told stories. But if you tell a story many times, that story changes, and it's not very reliable. It's not very accurate. But when you write it down, still it's not. A hundred percent accurate, but at least it's more accurate because it doesn't change. If you go to the original source that was written a hundred years ago, five hundred years ago, two thousand years ago, it's still the original source. It's not a hundred percent accurate, but it's more accurate than just telling stories for many generations. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because sometimes you hear people talk about prehistory, and basically. It's an interesting word. It means before history, although it's it's not really true. I mean, it still happens, so it's history. But when they say prehistory, they're talking about what happened before people knew how to write, and they call that prehistory, prehistoric. So when we talk about cave people, people living in caves, and they didn't have written records, we call that prehistoric times. So kind of interesting、uh, idea or.、Um, A、fact about、uh, the word history. Okay, let's continue. Native. A native is a person who has lived in an area since birth. If you were born in Korea and you've lived in Korea since you were born, you are a native in Korea. If you move to China, you're not a native in China, right? Then you become a foreigner or、uh, immigrant, right?、Uh, you're not a native in China. You're a native in Korea. Same thing if you were born in、uh, if you were born in France, you are a native of France. So natives are people who live in the certain area. They're like the original inhabitants. Of course, when people were exploring and going all over the world, you know they were not natives. They were explorers. They were leaving their home country and traveling to different countries. And they who did they meet? Well, of course. Of course, they met natives in those countries that they visited. So that's usually what native means. Bark. What is bark?、Uh, it doesn't mean a sound a dog makes, although that's true. <laughs> in a, in English, we say dog barks, woof, woof, right? That's a bark. But this is a different kind of bark. Bark is the tough outer covering. Of a tree, right? You know, so if you see a tree in the forest, right, and you touch it, it has a hard covering that protects the inside、uh, from insects, from the rain, from the weather, from the sun, so that the water inside the tree doesn't evaporate. But that we call that bark. And some trees you can peel the bark off. It's a hard covering. Okay, it's tough. They say it's tough. Tough here means hard or strong. Tough is hard or strong. So somebody who's tough is hard and strong. Okay, bark. Canoe. 
A canoe, and we have a good picture of a canoe. A canoe is a narrow, open boat that is moved by a paddle. They're very easy to turn. They, they turn very quickly, and uh, they're very easy to move because they're small, and you can just use a paddle. Uh, another word for paddle is oar, but oar is a little bit different. An oar, an oar is kind of like you know a long piece of uh, um, wood with a blade on the end, and usually you have two oars, and you you move your boat like this. But a paddle is just one one oar, and we call it a paddle, and it's light, and you can do this for a very long time to make your canoe go through the water. Now, American Indians were famous for using canoes because Europeans, I mean, Europeans had canoes, but uh, when they came to America, they saw the Indians or the natives using canoes. And so canoes became very fixed in their minds and associated with uh, Native Americans or Indians, Indians, Native Americans. Buffalo. Now, that's an interesting picture of a buffalo. <laughs> a buffalo is a kind of animal that looks like a large cow with horns. The reason I said that this is an interesting picture is because this looks like the Asian type of buffalo. Uh, I think it's also called a water buffalo, water buffalo, but it's not the kind of buffalo that we see in America. Oops, sorry, buffalo, not a, buffalo. I have to switch those around, okay. Okay, buffalo. Um, yeah, just look at this. Don't look at my writing. <laughs> okay. A water buffalo or Asian buffalo is different from an American buffalo. The American buffalo, uh, again, the, it's kind of similar. They're related, but they look different. The American buffalo is, is quite big. It's actually quite dangerous, and it doesn't stay in one place. Buffalo in America, they roamed for hundreds of miles, and they would go north and south following the cold and warm temperatures to eat the grass. Of course, they would move south in the wintertime to get away from the snow. And then when it got hot and too dry in the south, in the summertime, they would move back north. And the, the buffalo in America, oh, the buffalo in America are also called bison. Bison. And the Amer these were very important animals to the Native Americans because many Native American tribes in the middle of America would follow the bison north and south. They didn't live in a, they didn't have like villages or towns. They were, uh, they were travelers. They traveled all their life and they followed the animals because they got food from the animals. They got, they used the animals, uh, hide the skin for clothing and for shelter. They made tents out of them. They used the bones to make many different types of tools and even, um, uh, uh, arrowheads, sharp uh, parts of the arrow that they would shoot to kill other buffaloes. So bison were very important to the Native Americans who lived in the Midwest of America, the middle of America, a very wide area uh, up and down uh, the area north and south, going north and south. So it looked like a large cow with horns, but they are not cows. Cows are kind of peaceful. Bison can be very dangerous. If you go to America and you go to a national park like Yellowstone National Park, you can see many bison. They're also called buffalo. Be careful. Don't get out of your car. Don't go up and try to pet them. That's very dangerous. Don't do that. Right? Stay in your car. <laughs> okay. Usually they won't bother you, but you don't want to be out of your car if they, if they run at you. Yeah, that's not good. Okay, anyway. Here we have a video. And this is a video of looks like a water buffalo. This is not an American bison. This is a, this is not that type of buffalo. This is more like a, it looks like more a peaceful, uh, more domesticated uh, type of uh, buffalo. Okay, that's a water buffalo. Okay, so um, yeah, let's continue. Hide. Now, like I said before, the bison were very important to the American Indians because the American Indians would hunt the bison, kill them, and they didn't just eat the meat for food, they would skin, take the skin of the bison, and of course it has a lot of hair on it, fur, what we call fur, and it's very warm. And so they would use, we call the skin and the fur together, the skin and the fur, we call that a hide, right? And it's just basically the skin of an animal, but it also has uh, hair, fur, we call that fur, F-U-R. Fur is hair that grows really closely together. This is not fur, this is hair, but I have a lot of hair. Anyway, <laughs> it's not fur. Um, uh, fur would be like an animal where it's very thick and it's warm. 
right? So it's warm. So think about it. In the cold winter, the the hides were very good for clothing. It kept helped keep the Indians or the Native Americans. It helped keep them warm in cold temperatures. So it was a very important source of clothing. Okay, so that's our vocabulary for this lesson. Lesson seven: The first Americans. History: The things that happened in a particular place. Native: Living in an area since birth. Bark: The tough outer covering of a tree. Canoe, a narrow open boat that is moved by a paddle. Buffalo, a kind of animal that looks like a large cow with horns. Hide, the skin of an animal.